This three-part series is a quick setup version of the more in-depth tutorial videos. In this part one, we'll check out the Secretron in standalone mode on a netbook PC. Then in part two, we'll connect a real music keyboard using a USB to MIDI link. You can use any type of PC. This netbook doesn't have a direct MIDI connection, so we'll be using one of these USB sockets for this. Now I'm not a fan of touchpads, so I'll be using one of the sockets for a mouse. The Secretron is already downloaded and installed, so we'll start it here. First time round, there's a warning that it's in novice mode, so just click OK to acknowledge. And here's the main screen with the virtual keyboard. And we're currently in configuration mode, where we can tweak initial settings. But in this case there's nothing to tweak, so just click Run. Click any of the keys marked P for play on the virtual keyboard and you should hear sounds through the netbook speakers. If there's a delay between clicking the mouse and the sound, this may be due to Microsoft's internal synthesizer being used. You can see this is the case here. It's well known for its sluggish response. So if you want to continue using internal sounds, you need a different driver. Now I've already installed a free one called Bass MIDI. Here's how you select it. Click Stop to go back to Configuration Mode. Click Yes to confirm. Click Config Ports. You'll now see two sections, one for inputs, one for outputs. In the Outputs list on the right, deallocate the Microsoft driver and allocate the Bass MIDI driver. Then close the window to return to the main screen, where you'll see confirmation of the new output port. Click Run again, then click the virtual keys. They should now be a lot more responsive. Here's a quick overview of how to drive the Sequitron. More details are in the tutorial videos. All keys except this leftmost command key are playable. When you click Command, the keys flip into Command Mode, where you select one or more sequences, then click the command to be applied to those sequences. Now at startup, Sequence 1 defaults to being the audible metronome, so we'll start it playing. Click Command, Sequence 1, Play. And that's it. The sequence plays as a loop, and all keys have automatically returned to Live Mode, so we can play along. To stop the sequence, click Command, Sequence 1, Stop. The sequence stops cleanly at the end of its cycle. Now if you're worried about sacrificing a playable key to act as the command key, it can be configured anywhere else. It can be on another keyboard, or even a foot switch. So let's try recording. The tutorial videos show me trying to use a mouse for this, not too successfully, so we'll use the QWERTY keys which is a new feature in version 8.21. If you click the Help button, you'll see a list of which keys do what. In this version, the top rows are control keys, and the bottom two rows mimic an octave's worth of black and white notes on a music keyboard. Now, only a few keys are configured, as it's just for basic testing if you've nothing else connected. The whole raison d'etre of the Sequitron is to avoid using a mouse and QWERTY keyboard. We're still in live mode, so these keys will play as normal. The escape key acts as the command key, so pressing this allows commands to be entered. As before, we'll start sequence 1 playing, so we press command 1 play. Now we'll try recording on sequence 2. Press Command 2 Record to prime the recording. Play anything you like using the metronome as a guide. Then stop and instantly loop the recording by pressing Play. Now don't expect miracles here. I'm straddling behind the camera tripod and reaching round either side. The length of each recording is only defined when you stop it. 
so there's no need to plan ahead. You decide on the fly as the mood takes you. If the default piano sound is not your cup of tea, we can change this. But this is an advanced feature, and as you can see from the title bar, we're still in novice mode. So we need to turn this off first. Click Stop and Confirm. Click Config, Novice Mode and Confirm. Now we see a lot more options, one of which is the Program Change or Patch column. A dash means that program changes are disabled. So click the drop down arrow and select an instrument. We'll try number 88, which is a new age pad sound. Click run. Then try some notes. And let's try the metronome. Press command, one, play. The low notes for this sound are a bit quiet through the netbook's tiny speakers, but we'll try recording anyway. And here's the main screen showing the four sequences playing. In this version, the pitch command is not available on the QWERTY keys, but we can always use the mouse. Click Command, Pitch, plus 5. We can reset the pitch by clicking Command, Pitch, Origin. and we can stop all sequences by clicking Command, All But, Stop. Once program changes are enabled, you can change them at runtime on the fly using the PROG command, and one of the QWERTY keys acts as this command. You can enter an absolute program number, or use the minus and plus keys to decrement or increment the current value. Press Command, PROG, Increment, now this is another pad sound, but it's very quiet, so let's go back. We're back to number 88. We decrement again. Now this one's better. And here's the main screen showing we're now on PROG 87. Right, that's it for part one. We'll connect an external MIDI keyboard in part two.